What's up, YouTube? All right, we're finally doing it, fishing the canal. It's kind of hard to find a place to fish, even living in a town with, you know, 365 ponds in it. So, figure from a fish someplace that's crowded, might as well fish the canal. Haven't really had a good day here yet. I caught one fish my first trip on the second cast, and since then, I ain't caught shit. So, I guess I'm gonna work the canal until you know, something happens. The parking lot is pretty much empty except for three other cars. Usually that's a bad sign, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. The night that I caught my personal best striped bass, there was like two other cars in the parking lot and it was raining. Right now there's four cars in the parking lot and it's raining. I actually didn't measure or weigh that fish because I had already caught a 13 pound bass that I kept and um, I didn't want the big breeder to die so i just took a picture of it and let it go most of the people who i've talked to said that it was probably between 35 and 40 pounds so it was a big striper big for me anyways biggest one i've ever caught i've only been fishing the canal for three years so yeah uh whatever i'm pretty much rambling about nothing right now so uh let's just go try to catch some stripers let's do it All right, this is the spot where I caught my PB striped bass. This is also the spot where one night I fell on my ass and got two pencil poppers in the kidney, rolled around in the grass for about 10 minutes, groaning like a little bitch. It hurt though. God damn, this place is a bitch, dude. Yeah, if you come down here on vacation, I suggest investing $150 to $200 in these corker boots. See guys coming down here in open toe sandals and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you fish this place in open toe sandals without like, you know, breaking a toe or an ankle, back or a neck. Hell, I got spiked boots on. It's still a pain in the ass to get down here. It's the second fish I've seen break on top. I'm sticking with top water. Hopefully I can keep him pinned. Doesn't feel very big. Hey, maybe he'll be a keeper and I can make it a catch and cook if I keep him pinned. Not terrible though. Hey, that's not bad at all. He's pretty fat. Might actually end up measuring this dude. All right, my first proper striped bass of the season. That is a nice one. I'm gonna measure him real quick. And if he's not big enough to keep, I'm gonna put him. All right, you guys. Well, I actually caught my first keeper of the year. He's legal, he's right between 28 and 29, and um, his jaw got pretty messed up because I didn't remember to crush the barbs on that pencil popper, which is not a good thing, so. I'm gonna keep him, I'm gonna make this a catch and cook. It's legal, it might be the only keeper I catch all year, who the hell knows, so. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep this guy. Because I don't think he would make it anyways, to be honest with you. Well, 
these barbs are pretty well crushed now so hopefully if i catch another one if i catch another one it won't be so hard to get the hooks out to be honest i normally wouldn't keep a fish that's that close to being a keeper just to be on the safe side but that fish was not going to live if i let it go i need to remember to crush all the barbs on every single lure that i'm using because if that was a fish that wasn't legal i would have felt pretty bad about not being able to release well i mean i still would have had to release it just would have been floating down the canal which would have sucked uh, luckily this one will not go to waste oh oh man Oh, there we go. That was a nice hit. That was a nice top water strike. Ooh, this is a bigger one. This is a bigger one. I don't know how big it is, but it's good. Ooh. Okay. Not huge. What the hell did I do with that? Oh shit. Oh, they're over there. Alright, second striper of the morning on top water. That's pretty cool. This one's definitely bigger. Definitely too big to keep. <laughs> Second striper of the morning, biggest one of the year. That is a good one. That is a good one. I'd say it's probably probably close to 10 pounds. Maybe a little over, maybe a little under. Not sure. Try to get them back as quick as possible. Because this one ain't going home. See, I'm gonna have to give this one some TLC. There he goes. All right, cool deal. Look at that. First keeper striped bass of the year. 28 and a quarter inches long. And uh, after bleeding it and having it out of the water for two hours, it weighed seven pounds. So I'm guessing it was probably around eight pounds when I first caught it. This dude is really fat for his length. I'm kind of kind of interested to interested interested. I'm kind of interested to see what he has in his stomach. Now, lesson learned today, which is rookie mistake by me. I should I should know better, but uh, crush your barbs and loosen up the drag. Otherwise, you're gonna have fish with jaws that look like this. Yeah, his jaw's pretty much broken. So luckily this fish was a keeper because if I had to release it, it probably would have died and that would have sucked. That would have sucked really bad. But uh, yeah, crush your barbs and loosen up the drag. That goes for me too. Like I said, I should know better. All right, there's really nothing special about cleaning a striped bass. Pretty much the same as any other fish. Just gonna start off up here, make a cut. Go along the backbone, all the way down. 
Once I get past the stomach, I'm gonna push all the way through. Come back along, go over the stomach. Yep, that's the stomach. Okay, that's kind of an ugly fillet, but I never claimed to be very good at filleting fish, so there's that too. I mean, it ain't terrible though. So now I'm just gonna take that fillet, I'm gonna run my knife horizontal, or, yeah, kind of. And I'm just gonna skin it. Oops, I f***ed up. Yeah, that sucks. Not like I said, I'm not great at filleting. Okay. Try to keep the knife flat so that doesn't happen. If you cut an angle into it, you're gonna cut into the skin. Okay, there we go. It's actually not a terrible fillet. Not the best one I've ever done, but it's been a while since I filleted one of these. Same thing on this side. Make a cut down the spine. Once so I get past the stomach, poke it through. This side's a little harder just because it's the other fillet isn't there to support it, so it kind of sags down. I think that's I think that's true in most fish that you fillet. The second side's always hardest. Miss that stomach. go goodbye striper friend you are fun to catch and you will be even funner to eat all right same deal try to keep the knife flat all right that one actually came out a little bit better uh, not terrible and two nice clean striper fillets there we go all right i'll see you when i'm eating it or cooking it i don't know okay i meant to do this while i was cleaning up but for some reason i always forget to do this i want to see what's in this dude's stomach what are you eating fuggin oh you were eating mackerel well that makes sense no wonder i caught you on a mackerel imitation I think that's a mackerel. Pogey maybe? No, it's definitely a mackerel. It's got little teeth and it's got the profile of a mackerel. Kind of hard to tell, it's mostly digested, but that was a mackerel at one point. <laughs> See what else he's got in there. Is it just mackerels? I should eat a striper heart. <laughs> yep, there's another one. Oh, he was definitely chowing on mackerel. Yep, that's a mackerel. Well, kind of makes sense why I caught it on a mackerel imitation. He had two in his stomach. Well, that's kind of cool. Kind of gross, but kind of cool too. See if he's got any more mackerels in his stomach. Oh, he does. No wonder he's so fat. <laughs> Dude was chowing. And there is mackerel number three. This one is very digested and disgusting. So, yeah. Yay. That one was almost a turd. Okay, so he had three mackerel in his stomach. So I think it's safe to say that uh, 
They were eating mackerel this morning. All right, so I'll see you when we go make a turret out this son of a bitch. Okay, you guys. So we're at the cooking part of the video. Now, if you do decide that you want to cook striped bass using this recipe, what you're going to need is some salt, pepper, paprika, white wine, lemon zest, a filet of striped bass, and butter. I believe that's all you need. Oh, grated Parmesan cheese, too. I forgot the most important ingredient. Parmesan cheese. Yep. That's it. Okay, let's get to it. All right, guys, so ready to cook the striped bass. I've got my filet here. I've got a small amount of pepper and salt on each side. I've got my pan here. I've got a half a stick of butter. I'm gonna bake that until the butter browns. Then we'll be back to show you the next step. All right, so the next step is I'm gonna put my bacon dish with my butter in the oven, and I'm gonna let it sit in there until the butter browns. Now, when you do this, make sure you have your oven set at oven. Make sure you got your oven. Make sure you have the oven set at 375 degrees. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so this one's the hot one. Okay, now we wait. Okay, our butter's been browned. I don't know nothing about browning no butter, but it looked brown to me, bubba. I don't know. Okay, so now I'm gonna wanna take my filet and I'm gonna wanna dip it in this browned butter, both sides. Okay, now that we have both sides covered in the brown butter, we're gonna wanna put it back in and let it bake for 10 minutes. 10 minutos, okay? All right, I'm gonna set my alarm for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. Okay. Okay, we've got our white wine. I'm only gonna put a little tablespoon of it. Now, I'm gonna take my lemon zest. I don't wanna go crazy with the lemon zest, but it's clumping up. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of paprika. I'm not gonna go crazy with this stuff either. Good enough. And now the last step, Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese. I wouldn't go overboard with it. If you're a cheese lover like me, you might want to put a little, little more on. I'm probably going to put too much. That's okay. You don't have to put as much as I do. So now you want to broil it until the cheese bubbles and browns. Okay. Well, that is the finished product. I don't know how to feel about it. It looks okay. I guess we're gonna find out. Okay, ready to eat. Now, quick disclaimer, I have eaten this recipe before, so I already know that it's good. This is the first time I've cooked it myself, so whether it will still be good is up for debate. I'm not Gordon Ramsay or Guy Fury. I might be an asshole like Gordon Ramsay, but I can't cook like him, so we'll find out. First bite, let's see. It looks good. Try not to chew loud. It's very good. I'm not just saying that because I cooked it. This is probably the best recipe for striped bass I've ever had. Mmm, that is really good. It's not a hard recipe. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Like I said, I suck at cooking, so if I can cook this, anybody can. Oh, it's really good. This is one of the few catch and cook videos you're probably going to see on my channel. I don't keep many fish. I'm mostly catch and release, especially with fresh water because the ponds around here are contaminated to shit with mercury. And I did the one, I kept one smallmouth bass because it was hooked in the throat and bleeding. I knew it wasn't going to live and I've heard smallmouth are good. And when I filleted it, it had two worms in it. I picked them out, still ate it. It tasted okay, but probably took about 10 years off my life. Anyway, this is the shit. So if you're planning on keeping legal striped bass, this is the recipe you want to use or at least try it. It's good. Yeah, good. Try it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. I do enjoy reading the comments, even if they're like troll comments. Just don't leave any of those stupid, like, you know, 33 seconds. Go to MILF website. Stop leaving that shit on my videos, you fucking weirdos. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you on the next one. Keep on spanking them.